guys uh, this is Dooley so in this video we will continue to talk about uh, distinct the distinct operator uh, which is one of the operators that help us do set operations on collections so what distinct does as we've seen before is it remove duplicates out of collections so in the last video we did that for integers and we did that for strings but this time we'd like to do that for custom objects that we've created and the custom object that we are going to use that for is the gene class uh, this is the same gene class that we've used before it has two properties sequence and fitness but uh, this time instead of an array we're going to use a, a, a list of genes uh, just to show that you can use, uh, you can interchange these uh, these uh, uh, collections. Could be an array, could be a list, it could be uh, some other collection. As long as you know it implements the enumerable interface. Okay, so and I also have a two string uh, function here that just prints out uh, what the sequence and the fitness of the object is. Okay, so let's go back to our program.cs file. I've also added a print function here. I was getting tired of writing for loop over and over again, so I have a function here that will just uh, take care of that for us. All right, so if you want, you know, you the first thing you think about when, when using distinct you've done it before you've done it for integers you've done it for strings so why not just do it for uh, an object so let's go ahead and try that and see if that will work so let's call this local variable distinct genes so we could just uh, go ahead and call genes that distinct why not why would not that work well, let's try it and see what happens. Let's print that right here. Well, first of all, let's print uh, the genes list. Yeah, so we can see what we got. Let's just print a line here. Just so when we when we print them, we get some space. Okay, so print collection here we are going to print distinct just so we can see the differences between the two okay or lack thereof all right let's run this program and see what we're getting all right I need some more space here okay all right absolutely no difference okay so distinct was not able to do its job now, why is that? The reason is that uh, the distinct function is missing some information about this object, this gene object. Okay, the reason why distinct was able to do the integers is because it knows how to compare integers. It knows how to compare strings, so it doesn't have any problem uh, seeing what is a duplicate. Okay, knowing if something is a duplicate is being able to compare them and, and saying hey these are the same or these are not the same okay so for the genes the genes the gene class we don't have a way of telling that to distinct we don't have a way of for distinct to compare them okay one way uh, to uh, tell distinct or have a gene be able to give that information to some class is by implementing uh, the I quotable interface and all you have to do for that is uh, up here you say that it implements the I quotable interface for the gene class okay and you can see here you have some squiggly lines and what that means is there are some missing methods and when you implement an interface uh, oftentimes it will require 
that you implement some uh, methods, some required methods. And the required methods for the I equitable interface is the equals function. The equals function will return a bool, and that bool sort of tells you if the objects are equal or if they are not. Okay, so you get a true if they're equal and you get a false if they're not equal. Okay, so um, the other function that's required is the get hash code function. The get hash code function just returns an integer and uh, I believe uh, this is implemented for the object class in C sharp and we know the object class is sort of the base object of all objects so any object that you any custom object that you implement will inherit from uh, the, the object class and the object black class has an implementation for get hash code okay so anything in C sharp will have a get hash code function okay so I have these two functions already written so I save you some time here okay so here's the get hash code function okay and all this is doing is going to return an integer now because uh, sequence is a string and strings uh, usually start as null uh, when you fresh first create a class and doesn't initialize that string to anything what it will have as value is null so if that value is null we're just giving the hash code as zero and if it already had the hash code uh, we're just getting that for the hash sequence and for hash sequence and here if uh, uh, we get the fitness fitness is an integer so we'll just get the hash code that was given to it uh, at the beginning and we just do some operation here to uh, return some integer that now the, the the key to the hash code is if you have two objects that are equal uh, the hash code that's returned by this function should be equal but if you have two equal hash codes it doesn't mean that they represent the same object okay so there are many different ways to write uh, these functions and in fact I'll provide a link uh, to the MSTN website that talks about the hash code function and w what they essentially do is uh, uh, some of the functions that Microsoft use or C sharp uses to um, to determine you know to, to sort things uh, to determine if things are equal or something use hashes so getting a hash code for that particular object or that integer allows it to distribute these objects in in a proper way in these hashes or hash tables or something so when they are distributed properly the operations that are done on these things are happen faster so that's why we are giving uh, a function here uh, to uh, provide a hash code for our object okay so the next function that's implemented here is the equals function and what that function does is return a bool that's going to be true if the two objects that are being compared are equal and that's going to return false if they are not so here I'm just checking if the object is null, uh, I, that's going to be false, okay? So if the object is null, I don't do anything when I initialize equal to false. But if the object is not null, the sequences are equal, the and the fitnesses are equal, and uh, equal will be set to true, okay? If these two conditions are true, then equal is true, and then I return equal right here. So if the objects are equal, I get true. If the objects are not equal, I get false. So, so we implemented the iEquitable interface, which requires two functions, get hash code and equals. 
equals just tell you if the objects are true and this uh, get hash code just provide an integer to allow uh, fast manipulation of these objects when they are being put in, in hash tables uh, which is sometimes what the underlying data uh, data uh, collection that's used to do operations uh, uh, to compare objects okay so let's go back to the program here now that we've implemented this interface all right let's go ahead and we run this and see what happens okay all right so as you can see here we have a different array now we remember that this right here this is a duplicate right this is the same as this right here. So we had a, a duplicate for fitness 9 in sequence ATCCTAGC. Uh, that duplicate is removed. We only have one of those here. And there were a couple of duplicates for, uh, for this. Uh, fitness 7, TTCATAGC and uh, this one is one of them and this one is another so these duplicates are removed as well all right so we get a, a shorter uh, list of genes all right so this was this video so what did we do we used the distinct operator on a custom object and for us to be able to do that properly we had to implement the high, the i equitable interface which requires that we provide uh, two functions. Uh, one is get hash code, and I will provide a link uh, in the uh, description where you can uh, learn more about uh, that function and how to write one. And, uh, and we had also to implement the equals uh, uh, function, which will return uh, a Boolean value that tells you true if the objects are equal or false if the objects are not equal all right guys so uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want to know when these videos are coming up please hit the like button if you like the videos and if you've got uh, comments and questions go ahead and throw them at me um, uh, again this is uh, Dooley and I'll see you next time